Hi everyone, so as promised, I've done a video on automotive design. If I miss anything out um, in terms of the questions, just give me another message and I can always answer those for you um, just directly through message. Um, but I will try and answer the ones that I've already had. Um, I'm going to do a quick background just on me, just so you're aware of how I got into this. Um, and if you're, not, if you're not interested in it, just uh, feel free just to skip to the end to those questions then. Um, so I always knew that I wanted to go into a career that was to do with cars. Um, I wasn't sure what it was going to be, but I knew it was 100% going to be related to either driving or you know anything car related. Um, as time went on, I realised that I had a real flair and a real passion for anything creative, and I loved art, textiles, design, anything to do with that. And so I knew that was a route I was taking as a career. Um, still no idea how cars was going to come into it. Um, but luckily for me, I grew up with my cousins who were really into their cars, both boys and me and my sister, we both really got into cars too and that's where it all started um, and it just grew, the passion and the love just grew and grew and car design as a course was actually mentioned to me by my cousin um, where I hadn't actually heard of it before and as soon as I heard it, just it was probably the best thing I'd ever heard. Art and cars to me was probably the perfect combination. Um, so that's where it started, um, I looked up into how I can get it how I could get into it, looked at the best universities for it and Coventry University came up as the best one in the UK to study the course. It was a risky move at the time but I only applied for that one university and uh, luckily I got in uh, to study automotive design. I then deferred a year just to uh, take a year out, work a bit, um, earn a bit of money and I ended up working as a receptionist at Audi for a year which is why I've always had a love for them and already had three of them. Um, but anyway, on to the actual course itself and when I started after that gap year, um, the first year consisted of getting to grips with all the sketching and perspective and all the pastel marker renderings, doing a lot, a lot of things by hand and the engineering basics um, and another part of it was group work and teamwork that comes in massively um, into the job itself. Um, so where does the modelling come in, the clay modelling come in? That started in the second year of uni when um, it was introduced to us as a project we were to create an abstract clay head of some sort um, so that's where it all began I had no idea um, along with a few of other my other my classmates who probably weren't aware of it either um, a lot of us didn't realize it was part of the car designing process so clay modeling uh, plays a vital role in the designing cars. It's known as industrial clay or industrial plasticine, um, same thing, and it's used to create full scale as well as smaller scale models to visualise the design in the 3D form before it's taken any further onto CAD and onto the computer um, for the models to be formed on there. They also work alongside us. Um, it's it's one of those careers that you can get into that, I don't know, you've got to be really passionate about it. I really did become passionate in that second year and I absolutely loved just the fact of creating something in clay and then it becoming, you know, a real thing and it sort of took me away from that want to be a car designer as in to sketch and create in, you know, on paper. Instead, this was something far better for me in my eyes um, and so that's where it all started and I knew that that was the route I wanted to take and that was how I was going to get into the automotive industry. I wasn't sure, you know, if I'd be good enough, but, you know, I got it into my head in that second year that that's the route I was going to go down. Uh, so those three years then went on and then on to the fourth year. In between, I did do some clay models whenever we had a project where, where we were able to um, to create a clay model. Um, and as you can see behind me from the board, this was my final project. Again, I think I put a few bits up on my page to do with my final model. Um, but this was my main clay piece that was going to get me that job. Luckily I'd had um, a placement at Aston Martin for three months during the summer of my third year at uni um, and that gave me a lot more experience and made, gave me the confidence to be able to do uh, the model that you can see behind me in the photos. Um, after that, after this degree show is when I was approached and um, did the clay modelling academy at um, a place called Envisage and then I managed to get myself through to Jaguar um, to become a clay modeler there. So I've got to say, yeah, it, it's, um, it was a really good experience and a really good journey to go through and to be able to now finally do what I really enjoy doing, 
Um, it's one of the best things. So what I'll do now is just so now you know sort of how I got there, um, I'll just answer the questions that I've had through. Um, and then, like I said, if I've left anything out or I've missed anything or I haven't quite answered what you had asked, um, just give me a private message and I'll give you a message. Thank you. Okay, so I've had these um, questions written down because I'm not going to be able to remember them all. Um, so one of the questions was, what is the content taught in automotive design? At Coventry, um, in the first year, you get taught all the basics, um, but a lot of it is self-taught. Um, you get a lot of downtime where you um, have to really teach yourself something, so it's quite difficult, um, but I think it's just all part of the process. Um, you know, it makes you lot learn a lot of things as well. So the, the the main things you get taught are sort of sketching quickly. You've got to be able to, you know, come up with an idea or a concept really, really fast. Um, and like I said, mainly it is self-taught, but it's absolutely imperative that you teach yourself that. Um, also, marker and pastel renderings, um, that's just a way of getting, again, a quick picture out, getting a quick concept rendering out, um, just, using, um, just using your hands rather than doing it all on the computer. Um, another thing is the engineering. We were taught um, engineering in the first year for us to be able to then continue it throughout our four years at uni. Um, CAD modelling using alias, that's something I really struggled at, wasn't the best at it, but you know, you make the best of what you have, make the best of what skills you have. Um, and it's not vital that you have to carry that into the fourth year final project, it was just something as a tool um, for those who pe people who really enjoyed it. Um, teamwork and time management, massively, massively important in this course as well. Um, you know, you do a lot of group projects and you've got to get learn to get on with people because in the industry that we're in, uh, it's all about teamwork, all about communicating with people. Sorry, I've just had a, an alarm come up on my phone. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator, all of the Adobe programs um, you get taught. Um, you know, you, like I said, you've got to really teach yourself um, some of the some of the skills, but you know, you get taught the basics, and that's what you need to be able to to be able to start off. Um, next question was, uh, where's a good place to get clay online? Now, this is a bit of a funny one. It's you can purchase industrial plasticine. Um, there were a few websites that um, I asked some of the guys at work about as well. There's one called Style and Clay International. Um, there's you can get it on off Amazon as well, but you've got to type in industrial plasticine, industrial clay. The only issue is there that you need um, a clay oven mm -hmm. to keep the clay warm because that's how um, how you work the clay um, and. It just could be really an awkward thing, so I wouldn't suggest you buying automotive plasticine to use at home because it does get everywhere. Um, so, you know, if you're looking at doing the course anyway, you'll be doing it in the course. But if not, maybe just practice with normal clay at home. Um, that's probably the best way to do it, I, I would say. Um, next question was, how can I apply to become a car designer or a clay modeler? It depends on how much experience you have, but I think there's lots of apprenticeships out there as well now. Um, but once you've built up your portfolio, I'd say search for any openings, um, email people with inquiries, mm -hmm. you know, you can, you know, you, sometimes you might not get a response, sometimes you might. I had someone message me saying it's really frustrating for them because they've had this dream of becoming a car designer since they were little and um, they just haven't been successful and it's, it's really upsetting to them. And it is a frustrating thing, but you've just got to keep going and see where you can get, you know, just keep pushing. Um, and try and make as many contacts as you can, where you can. Um, again, that's a really important thing. Who you know in this industry is really, really important. Um, and another question was, what should I include in my portfolio? Make sure you've got a variety of uh, different projects. Don't stick to just cars or just supercars or, you know, try and expand it to doing it as a, like transport design as well. So, you know, trucks and all sorts of you know trains planes anything um, just to make it a little bit more diversified because if you're doing just cars it gets a little bit boring and you're not, you're not doing anything different um, make sure you're showing off all your skills what you're good at so if you're good at sketching show that off if you're good at the, the rendering on photoshop um, show that off or you know the 3d modeling on the computer again show that skill off there's no issue in that because obviously you can always specify in a certain part and someone might find that and you know find that online on on one of the you know portfolio websites like this Behance there's a lot of work on there even have a look on on those websites for other people's 
work just for um, inspiration. Obviously, don't copy it, but just a bit of inspiration to see, you know, how other people present their work. Um, and just make sure you stand out. I think that's the most important thing is everyone's different. So don't try and, you know, fall into that category where it all looks the same and, you know, companies are looking for something different or so, someone to be just that little bit more special. So don't, you know, be just substandard, you know, try and shine in what you really enjoy and what you're good at. I hope this has been helpful. Um, if I have missed any questions out, which I probably have, um, just give me a message, like I said. And if you've got any other queries, uh, feel free to message me. Hopefully this video was helpful. Um, I just thought it would be better than answering questions directly to people um, and just for people to be more aware of it. Obviously it's a, it's a bit more of a different thing for a girl to be doing this course or to be doing the job I do or to have the interests I do. Um, and so I just think it's nice to create the awareness that there are girls out doing this and you know if there are any girls that are interested in cars just go for it because it's 100% worth it and you know why not.